Hello, folks. Uh, this is Paul Bedad from World War II TV. We are still in Budapest. I really hope the sound will be good enough here because it's quite noisy where we are. If you saw the couple of shows I did two days ago, uh, my expert for that was Jeff Cable, who's our guide, host, driver, along with his brother, Ross. And um, the reason I didn't do anything yesterday is it was just too rainy, too wet. Um, but I'll be doing some Woody's thoughts about what I saw yesterday when I get returned to Normandy. But here we are. And I'll hand over to Jeff to explain where we are. Hello, everyone. Welcome to a beautiful sunny day in uh, Budapest, November the 6th. And I cannot believe I'm wearing a T-shirt. It's unbelievable. This has never happened before in uh, over 20 years of living in this region. So here we are in a big square in central Buda, Buda being half of Budapest, the west side of Budapest. And it's a big square. As you can see, it's a transport hub, a lot of trams coming in here, buses. So a major square in the city. It's called Sel Kalman Square. But back then it was called Moscow Square, maybe coincidentally. And uh, basically we're just under the castle. Uh, behind these buildings on my left, your right, behind here, a few blocks up, is the Budapest Castle. This is the area, the final defense area of Budapest, where the German and Hungarian armies were basically pushed into this very small pocket uh, just around the castle and in the castle, but it was a very strong hilltop position. Um, so the, the Russians, by contrast, or I should say the Soviets, to be technically correct, made it to the other side of the square and had boxed the, the Axis forces in here. Um, now, over further to your left, there's a building here called the Postal Palace. And uh, this is in the center of the square. And there was heavy fighting in this building where at one point the Axis forces were on one floor or two floors. The Soviets were coming in from the bottom and they were fighting. They were occupying the same building at the same time on different floors. Now, uh, the, the front line uh, basically uh, stopped here for a couple of days. And then the, the Axis forces realized that they had only one chance of survival, uh, well, to surrender, which didn't guarantee them survival at all, um, or they should do a breakout. So they did the breakout. So they all came down from these streets, coming, uh, coming down from the castle. And uh, at 8 p.m. on February the 11th, in the darkness, it was a very cold winter, a lot of snow around. And they did what would have happened probably be classes one of the most uh, biggest uh, and most desperate breakouts of the entire World War II. And across this square behind me um, was the major area, although there were several smaller breakouts uh, in other sectors around here. But in total, 28,000 Axis forces streamed out of these roads and basically ran across the square and were absolutely massacred uh, by machine guns, by mortars, tank fire, etc. And there was a massive bloodbath in the square. It's, it's actually hard to believe. But just through sheer weight of numbers, thousands managed to get across the square. So on the right here on the German side is a Burger King. Some made it to McDonald's and KFC. There's a Starbucks down there as well. Um, and um, several groups managed to get through the square, through these side streets. And there were skirmishes all through these back streets. And, um, you know, many p further people, uh, Axis forces mainly, were killed in these back streets. But several small groups managed to break out into the suburbs of Budapest to the uh, northwest. And um, in heavy snow, several days later, a very tiny percentage of those who broke out managed to get out and made it back to the German lines, which might have been about 20, 25 kilometers away. Um, so in total of the 28,000, uh, 700 made it back to German lines. So that's only 2.5% of those who broke out. So in other words, 97.5% uh, uh, um, were either massacred or captured. So I would say this is one of the bloodiest massacres of World War II, most desperate breakouts. And um, it's just literally unimaginable what happened on this square on February the 11th, 1945. So pretty crazy. Thanks very much. So you got it there from Jeff. Um, you've heard me talk. You've had other experts on the channel. We've done some pretty 
horrendous massacres and atrocities on World War II TV. Um, think of Normandy, some of the occasions where a few dozen uh, Canadian or British prisoners were, were massacred by the Germans. In this case, you're talking you know, 28,000 Axis troops are trying to escape, most of them, as Jeff said, through this square here. We were talking when we just had our coffees a few minutes ago how very few of the Hungarians here today would have any idea, any real notion of what happened in this square. Life has moved on. They've gone through numerous governmental changes since then. There was the 1956 Soviet uh, offensive into into this part of Hungary, and there's there's a memorial just down the road to the 1956 events. So most of these people there who are going to McDonald's and catching a tram and having a KFC or whatever it is they're having, I probably have no idea just how much happened in this square here. And it's a privilege to be here with Jeff and Ross and hear this and be on these sites. Um, and as Jeff said, glorious weather. I mean, it's November in what is effectively Eastern Europe and T-shirts and rolled up um, sleeves. So that's the building Jeff talked about a minute ago that, um, that was one of the main areas that the Soviets had defensive positions in. And as each time Jeff and his brother Ross come back here, more and more of the damage, the spang has been patched up. There was a building kind of around the corner there that had lots of spang on it when they were last here, but not not now. But yeah, this is it. I'm going to leave it at that. Um, but just, it's quite incredible to be here. Um, quite, you know, we talk about everything on the Eastern Front being bigger. That's the thing. The numbers are bigger. The scale is bigger. And, you know, 28,000 Axis troops trying to escape through this one area. Amazing stuff. So, anyway, I will leave it there. I may do something else again today, later. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe the next day we're heading off to another part of Hungary later on this afternoon. But thanks for watching, everybody. It's been really cool talking to you. I will see you all next time. It's Paul Dad for World War II TV. Saying enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers.